In this part, we finish hearing the rest of our poems, and then we get to read our own. Spooky! And also, we learn more about Siori than we knew before. That's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Siori. The atmosphere of the poems fits you very nicely. But it may be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Huh? I don't really understand. In other, in other words, I've seen poems of yours where the sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little bit more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everybody. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time for the festival, you know. Okay. Now who's next? Nasaki? Hmm? Don't make me go before Colin for Pre. It's not like I compare to you guys anyways. Might as well let Colin for Pre lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Jesus. Jesus, Nasaki. Nasaki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyways. Woo! I don't know what I was reading. Sorry, I'm not really as good as anyone else. Don't worry about it too much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something you'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Nasaki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Okay, sh she became a rapper all of a sudden. Nasaki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me like that? Because you're presenting? Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Nasaki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it, and Nasaki's trademark style and it works surprisingly well when it's spoken out loud. The words feel like they bounce up and down and it's given a life to the poem. Nasaki finishes and everyone applauds. She hops back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Ah, oh, well. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put whatever face I want for other people. When it's just my friends. It's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Siori. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so. Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming, though. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice for the festival, okay? It'll be make I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeesh. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised you're putting in all this effort for the club. Jesus, there she goes again. Hair in poor Nasaki's face. She loves doing that. It makes me really happy. Ah, yeah. No problem. Okay, everybody. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, so let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's working out real nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day! I can't wait! I can do this! I can do this! All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Shiori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it, if it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Shiori? Yep. Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Colin for Pre. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. Those girls at that club, man, they're fucking crazy. I walk home with Siori once more. <clears throat> Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Siori's being a little more quiet, quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Siori, 
Dot dot dot. Sorry, I was spaced out. Ah, no wonder. Hmm? I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Sorry, fumbles with the words. So let's just say that one day, Yuri has to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that, Sayori? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> oh! Jansen out to this music while I think about this question. Um... Well... Who do we want more? You know what? I think Sayori gets it, baby. Sayori? You really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Come on! Huh? <laughs> but she's so beautiful and smart. Sheesh. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Colin for Pre. You think about me too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it so. Siri, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point of speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. That's kind of weird for Siori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Ah, back to another poem. All right, so uh, let's make this poem about suicide, uh, des desire, uh, anxiety. Let's pick the worst word possible. Uh, animate the worst word possible. Uh, let's pick grief. Defeat. A tone. Uh, un eh, uncontrollable. Death. Broken. These words are getting really dark. Um, cry. Uh... Sticky, anger, lust, disown, it, disoriented, flee, unstable, dark, and an adventure. You know what? Suicide adventure. That's what it's about. That was a dark ass motherfucking poem. Oh man, I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club, now picking up piano? Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it all wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Uh. Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Nasaki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Siori all of a sudden. Yeah, Nasaki's act, uh, really weird. Monica, do they usually have a fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Aren't you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Oh, I didn't say I didn't like it. Besides, what do you mean by all of you people? Because it's right in your name. Mon Eka. Uh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Dot, 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 question mark. Ah, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sori's anyways. Excuse me? Where is Yuri anyways? Oh, there you are. Yuri's sitting at a desk in the corner of a loom, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Siori? I wave my hand in front of her face. Uh? You're spacing out again. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. Don't mind me. You could go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Suri shows me a big smile. 
Don't let me distract you from having fun with everybody. Well, all right. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Siori before turning back around towards everybody else. But the conversation is already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Siori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Tala for Priya, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but... Have you noticed anything up with Siori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading a little too into it too much, but she seems a little downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room with Siori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not one asking you, Colin Fripree. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask you if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Oh, are you sure about that? She seems like she wants to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a, with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Colin Fripree. Ooh. Ooh, my goodness. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... She already talks about you more than anything else, you know? Eh? She's been so much happier since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. She is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it ever has been. <laughs> You're so funny, Colin Fripre. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Whoa, baby! Da da da. Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyways? I didn't mean to jump to the conclusion. She should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her. So try not to think about it for now. Ah, all right. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Siori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Siori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet I can hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Siori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everybody else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this whole thing weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I could do besides wait for Monica. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, everybody. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everybody goes to retrieve their phones, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica, and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Siori. All right, well, since Siori is feeling down today, I think I'm going to show her my poem first. Maybe it'll cheer her up a little bit. Dot, dot, dot. Hmm? It's nice, I guess. Siori. Come on, I can tell you already don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Probably Yuri. Huh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good! That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Colin, for pre... Siori? Is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I, I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> all right. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? You go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a bit early today. Siori? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything, Siori cheerfully walks out of the classroom humming to herself. That was really fucking weird. Alright, uh... Let's show it to Nasaki. Uh, dot dot dot. This one's alright. 
All right, from Nasaki? Well, yeah. It doesn't blow me away. But there's nothing I really hate about it. It's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Shuri's poem from yesterday. Hey, you think so? Well, it was about death and suicide. Well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might as well be on the same wavelength. But you really never struck me as her type. Shuri has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know. How could someone be so fluffy and spend so much time together with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Ugh, that was a little unnecessary. Come to think of it, if it were for me, she'd probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. What the fuck is this music? I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminish your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore re reaching beyond your sight. A sea that sparkles with a brilliant light. The walls inside your mind will melt away for the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought you had left. <laughs> in a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint tail trail. Set you free in my windy sail. I remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be your beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you had thought left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. That's actually a pretty poem. I kind of like that. Yeah. I felt like if I kept writing about negative things, I kept writing about negative things, so I decided to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome! Kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. So, you decided to write about the beach first, then came up with a message later? Yeah, well, it's only because of what happened yesterday. I mean, after Yuri and I realized we kind of wrote about the same thing, she wanted to pick a topic and have us both write about it or whatever. Ah, oh, you can really see her doing that too. Making us write about a simple topic, then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyways. I mean, mine ended up being all kind of metaphorical too. But there's nothing wrong with doing that every once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. Alright, who should I show my phone to next? Let's go with Yuri. Da da da. Colin for pre. This is wonderful. I can feel the emotion you poured into it. Is this a result of trying what I suggested yesterday? Yeah, I guess so. You did a good job explaining. I really wanted to try to give it more feeling. Yuri visibly swallows. Even her hands appear sweaty. I'm not used to this. Used to what? I don't know. It's fine. Take your time. Yuri breathes and collects her thoughts. I know that Yuri likes to think before she speaks, so I give more off of that patience to her. Yeah. Just being appreciated like this, I guess. It probably sounds really stupid, but seeing someone so motivated by my writing, it just makes me really happy. Are you saying you've never shared your writing before? Yuri nods. Really, I don't believe it. I really only write for myself. Besides, people would just laugh at me. Do you really think that? Again, Yuri nods. Huh? Even your close friends? Dot dot dot. For some reason, Yuri doesn't respond. Yuri. Yuri smiles sadly. Call him for pre. During lunchtime, I eat by myself. Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyways, but... Books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you just know would make the world make a really good friend. Cheerful people always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers or discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know. And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And, and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. 
People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Colin Pre. It's just the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings. All I could do with, with them is read and write. But if it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you, that I really understood what I was missing this all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. And I know I'm a difficult person, Colin Fapri. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me just like everyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. That's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see. Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And other people don't see it that way, then screw them. I mean, I joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I'd say it, I at least had one success. Wouldn't you? Um, if you put it that way, yeah. We really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands. But this time she's smiling as she does it. Do you want to show me your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. They wrote about the same thing again. Beach, a marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of the earth chaotically meets the surface. Under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss, but beneath gray, nulling clouds, an enigmas enigma, the easiest world to get lost in, is one where everything can be found. One where each build, where one can only build a sandcastle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations while, until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you chastling down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet we still build sandcastles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles. Where the toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle, yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line. Tempted by the foamy nostrils. Turn back, and I abandon my peace to a note at the shore. Drift forward, and I return to Earth forevermore. That's pretty. They both write about the same goddamn thing again. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an insane thing to write about, but I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. Yeah, Nasaki already told me about it. She did? She didn't say anything weird, did she? She just wanted us to write about the same topic again. I suppose it's better to compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wants to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just wanted her request, but... Well, I suppose it's not to write about something, something so simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. Alright, last but not least, Monica. Hi, Colin Fabri. Have you thought about what you wanted to submit to the to ah, what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people? I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Ha ha ha. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. Dot, dot, dot. Great job, Colin Fabri. I was, gonna, I was going, ooh, in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. Yeah, it's about death and suicide, Monica. I'm sure it's very metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it'll always count when I put in some effort. <laughs> That's not very fair. Jesus Christ. Well, I guess it worked anyways. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Unlike Shiori, who likes using simple and direct words to describe happiness and sadness. Yuri likes it when readers are left to divulge their own meaning out of it. It's very challenging to write like that effectively. Both allowing people to get something out of it just by how they feel, or letting them deeply analyze all of the nuisances. It can take years of practice, which I'm assuming Yuri has at this point. I never really asked, though. I'm sure it's I'm nowhere near her level yet. 
Don't worry so much about that. You do your own thing. Just keep exploring and learn by trying new things. Anyway, I'll share my book with you now, all right? Uh, all right. Yeah, Monica. Uh, this is a... Okay. All right. The Lady Who Knows Everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The Lady Who Knows Everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am. A feather. I like that. Lost adrift, the sky victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. When all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star listening in the twilight. The twit. The twilight. That's the, the twilight sky. Until one day the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall and fall, and I fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I'm thinking. Before I can speak, she responds, she responds in a hollow voice. I found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with each breath, she blows me back afloat. And I pick up like a gust of wind. You know what? That's my favorite poem so far. I really like that poem, actually. It's very pretty. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are all sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything. It was kind of in my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we all have the same answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everybody in this club prefers writing about things that, eh, things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Ah, <laughs> yeah, that. Anyway, here's Ma. Here we go again. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Hopefully, she won't tell me to save the fucking game again. Are you ever too sure? Eh, are you ever too shy to share your writing because your friend's not that good? Oh, it can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you ever, if you find other people who enjoy writing, the sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want you to focus more on eh, focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's more encouraging that way. It'll make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Thanks again, Monica. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out? Hold on a second. Is it just me, or did you say something strange just now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deliberated from usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Sheesh. Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune, immune to it. Uh. Stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Jesus Christ, Yuri. Your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Yuri isn't here. Yeah, she went home sick. Ah, it seems you're right. Sigh. Yuri always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown, is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyways? I thought she just went to pee. Nasaki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Ah, she wasn't really feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? Oh, she's all right. Seriously? Of all the times not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? Nasaki, please. I, I had to read poems today. So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Ah, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Siori. And second... She's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Who? That curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people. Calm down, guys. 
I talked to her earlier and everything's fine. What does she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so... Let's decide what we'll be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. The sake will be making cupcakes. But we might be need, we might need a lot of them in different flavors. Can you handle it all by yourself, Nasaki? Challenge accepted! And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sure, we're helping me design them. And as for Yuri, dot dot dot. Yuri, you can, uh, um, dot dot dot. Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri as I put my hair in her face? I, dot dot dot. I'm useless. No! That's not that at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Dot dot dot. Now the Saki's pouting too? Jeez, even I can't tell now. I guess I never gave Shiori enough credit, but I can tell when things are even harder on you when she's not around. Uh, that may be the case. But if I can't also be the leader of my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? She should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I... I love atmosphere! Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk and focuses and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be as wonderful help, Yuri. And anyway, that just leaves you, Colin, for pre. What do I do? The one who is truly useless. <laughs> I don't say that. In fact, both Nasaki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It'd probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would really be appreciative of that. Ah, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? Ooh, baby. How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah, uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a little bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. Jesus Christ, Nasaki. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyways. Naki could try to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Nasaki, you mentioned you would like to handle baking on your own. Colin Fapri might not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyways? Sounds like... Sounds like you're... That sounds more like you're making excuses for Colin Papri to... Hello? What on earth are you saying? It will be extremely matris... Oh, yeah, that's, a, that's a new word for me. Uh, Matruder's work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Colin Papri to decide how we like to contribute. Besides... He hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know. Honestly, I'm, I think I'm like Monica a little bit here. I could get used to seeing this pose all the time, you know. So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Sheesh. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Come on for pre, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, well, of course. Um, well, who do we choose, guys? Hmm. Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course, I'm going to go with... And we'll leave it for next time. I'll see you guys in the next one. We'll make, uh... Final choice here. We'll see who we're spending the week with. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and don't forget to check out the rest of my videos.